Welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having an amazing day. So as you guys know, happiness is opening your email and you've got some really cool stories sitting there. But what's even better is when there is a part two to a story that you never knew was coming. And that was Christmas morning for me. I'm so excited, you guys, because to be honest, I felt the same exact way as you did. You needed to know more, and so did I. And for those of you who have just clicked on this video and don't have a clue about what I'm babbling on about, it was a story I did the other day, episode 705, I believe. It was called, A Bigfoot Father Brought Us His Dying Child to Save. So it was just a few days ago. Okay, enough of the jibber-jabber. Let's get to the story. Okay, so this story takes place in the town of Libby, or outside of the town of Libby, in Lincoln County, Montana. Now, because this is a continuation, I would recommend that if you haven't heard the original story or the part one, maybe go back to a Bigfoot father brought us his dying child to save and listen to that story first because this is definitely a continuation. Okay then, so, dearest Leslie, I cannot believe the response from the people about our experience with Luella. She was and is an ongoing part of my life. Every single part of this farm has a memory of Luella and my son Brad. I thought it was kind of neat that you all wanted to hear more stories about Luella. LOL. Okay, I'll do my best. First, I want to point out that the life of a Sasquatch or Bigfoot cannot be compared to a human life because they are as different as night and day. Their daily struggles are not the same. For a Sasquatch, their life centers around food. They are voracious eaters i.e. a seven and a half foot tall male takes down a decent sized eight point white tail for instance they can put away most of it in one seating which can last for hours but we as humans would be thinking that we should ration it to make it last but not them they can find food where we would starve to death water too They can sit down and poke a hole in a certain part of a tree, for instance, and get water or liquid to satiate their thirst. But Luella didn't have those same worries, so she was free to be the happy, worry-free being that she was. She didn't worry about her looks or fear that she wasn't smart enough. Her life was lived day-to-day on a whim and her whims most of the time left us in stitches, which is probably why Brad and Luella just did not get along. He was always worried that people would find out about her existence. He never brought friends home, nor would we allow him to do that, and I do feel bad about that too. But you wanted Luella's stories, so here goes. She went through a phase where she was spying on everyone, but also practicing a very important Bigfoot lesson. Lori and I slept upstairs, and we had a window facing east and a window facing south, approximately. The window to the east had a big old tree that provided shade against the morning sun. One morning I woke up, and the sun was already up, I rolled over and I looked at the window to the east and I saw something that made me do a second take. There was Luella laying along the big branch coming towards the bedroom window and she was almost completely camouflaged looking right in at us. If she hadn't blinked, 
I may not have even seen her. Bigfoot can go long periods and not blink for this exact reason. Their eyes are very large, and you notice a blink if you're trying to uncamouflage something that you believe to be there. I've seen something odd in the woods, and I'm looking at it, trying to make out exactly what it is. To me, I see a tree, but there is just something about that tree that is alerting my brain. All of a sudden, the tiniest twitch of a finger or the blink of an eye and the facade is up. The tree is a Bigfoot and they know the gig is up and they run away laughing. Usually it was quite a ways in the distance and usually it was Huey, Dewey or Louie that would do these little tricks on us. But I also noticed the big guy doing this a couple of times from the wood line as well. He would be standing right out in the open, and you would look and not see him, but you would see that something looked unusual or out of place. And then, right before your eyes, it turned from being unrecognizable to being the Bigfoot standing right there. I'm not exactly sure, but I do believe the term cloaking or uncloaking is a good way to describe what is happening. But there were also other times when she would sneak up to the porch where she thought she was sneaking, but we were watching and wondering what that nincompoop was doing now, LOL. But she would hold a hand in front of her eyes and she assumed that if she couldn't see us, then we couldn't see her, just like a kid. She did that all the time. If she was caught sitting in the strawberry patch, eating strawberries, Dory would yell, Luella, get your butt out of those strawberries. Then Luella would just cover her face and sit still for a while. Then she would peek to see if the coast was clear. Oh, and she could swim like a fish. We had taken some trees out to make the pasture bigger for grazing, and there was a pond in there as well that Dory was hemming and hawing over. She didn't know what to do with it. One evening after dinner, we all took a walk down to look at the pond to decide what to do. And Luella jumped in like it was part of her daily activities. She went under and didn't come back up for the longest time. We were starting to panic and scream for her. I was just about to jump in when she popped up as happy as can be. That was it. That pond became her fun place. And that saved Lori and Dory a lot of butt cleaning with the hose after that. That actually brings me to a topic that a lot of people don't really know much about. Bigfoot don't wipe their rear ends. But they don't have bowel movements that stick to them, usually. But when they do, it can become a mess. So the girls would hose her down and, in the process, taught her to pay attention to that area when she was swimming in the pond. I never noticed the big guy or any of the other Sasquatch with what Dory called a nasty butt. So I'm sure the Sasquatch had a way of dealing with that kind of thing, but they just hadn't taught Luella that yet. The girls took to rinsing Luella off after she swam in the pond. The algae smell stuck to her hair. She would see that hose coming out and she would start to squeal. But then Lori or Dory would grab her hairbrush because Luella had found an old dog brush in the barn and she claimed that as her hairbrush. So after the girls rinsed her with the hose... They would let her dry off and then they would brush her out until her beautiful hair was shining. Another thing I touched on, when Luella was in her tent, I mentioned that she did her business in there. But of course, it's possible that it was because she was badly injured and couldn't get around. She was on antibiotics and mild pain relievers. So she was pretty groggy, which is probably the reason she didn't or couldn't get out of there at first. When we put her in the barn, she never went to the bathroom in there. But 
By then, she was able to hobble about and could get outside a lot easier. Once I found Luella in the stall that we used for storage, she was hunched over the boxes looking behind them. When I went to investigate, I saw that Ginger, the barn cat, had given birth. The kittens were already a couple of weeks old because their eyes were open. Luella was enthralled. She would reach in with her index finger and pet them ever so gently. She was obsessed, and Ginger didn't mind at all, because when we discovered 13 dead mice piled up beside where Ginger kept her kittens, there was no way that it was Ginger. Ginger never hoarded. She would get mice and go outside and eat them, but we were pretty sure it was Luella's gift to Ginger for giving birth. Hmm, I'm wondering if that's what the Sasquatch do, and maybe that's where Luella learned it. You get gifts after giving birth, just like humans do. So, when the kittens turned six weeks, we started giving them away. We realized that Luella was more and more devastated with each giveaway. So we made a big deal of letting her choose her own kitten, and they were the best of friends. Often the kitten would sleep with her. His name was Max, and I don't recall at the moment what happened to Max. I know I'm a terrible cat owner. There's been just so many of them. The first Christmas Luella was with us, Lori bought her a cheap version of a Barbie. You know, the kind where the knees don't bend. She got one with auburn colored hair, exactly like Luella's. And Lori made a big deal out of showing Luella that they had the same color hair. Now that I think of it, I don't recall if I mentioned that Luella was auburn colored. And in certain lighting, she was light brown and blonde at times. I think she looked a lot like her mother. Luella's father had long, black, shiny hair. Completely opposite of Luella. Anyway, Luella loved that Barbie. She ran around squealing, and then she'd stop and stare at it. And then the squealing would start again. She took that Barbie everywhere on the farm. But we were curious if she would take it when she would leave to spend time with her family. We looked in her stall, but it wasn't there. So Lori sat at the window and watched Luella sneak out. And sure enough, she had her Barbie tucked up under her armpit. At this particular time, Luella would leave to spend days at a time with them. And there were times that she wouldn't leave the farm for several days but usually she'd spend as much time as possible with her family. Anyway, back to the Barbie. This particular time that Luella left with the Barbie, a few days went by and one morning about 4.30, 5 a.m., we were all woken up by a terrible commotion and saw Luella come hobbling from around the side of the barn. She looked like she had gotten into a bad fight. Her hair was matted, and she was missing some in spots. We could tell it was most likely over her Barbie. We noticed that there were several days where she had no Barbie, and she was distraught. So Lori and Dory went everywhere to find the same cheap Barbie, but you could only find a blonde version of it. They made a big show of giving her the new Barbie, and Luella liked the Barbie, but it just wasn't the same. She played with it, but now it was just another toy. Over the years, the Barbies came and went. Even red-headed versions with real bendy legs. You know, the real Barbies? But they were just not a perfect match like the first one. Then the day that I found Luella, when I was sitting with her, waiting for Brad to arrive, I noticed something kind of under Luella a little bit. So I reached under and I pulled it out. To all my dear friends, it was her Barbie. The hair was nearly gone, but the little hair it still had was the exact color of Luella's. One of the legs was gone and there was only a hole in the hip that remained. 
one of the hands was also missing. But I received so much comfort knowing that the object that meant the most to her was with her right until the end. Well, I hope that gives you more of a look into her life. You can't even imagine how it makes me feel to know that you all wanted to know more about her. She would have loved it. Thank you again, Tommy Dean. Wow. Well, all I can say is that it's us who should be thanking you because that was just the most amazing story. I've told a lot of stories in my last few years doing this. And I got to tell you, your story was probably the most heartfelt, or at least up there for sure. Anyways, guys, I pretty sure you enjoyed this story as much as I did. I hope everybody has a wonderful day and we'll see you back here in a day or two. You know, I love you. Bye for now.